yes, I did get out of the stock market for a whole five years. Not necessarily my retirement accounts, but as you can see by this Vanguard screenshot, my self-managed brokerage was at zero. I had sold off everything in 2015 for a couple of good reasons and just recently got back in in November 2020. So people probably watching are like, why would you actually do that and miss out on five years of returns? Well, I'm actually still trying to figure that one out too. But honestly, I do have a couple of good reasons and that's what we're talking about today. What's up everybody, welcome back, my name's Josh. Today we're talking about why I got out of the stock market, why I got back in in 2020, and of course what I've learned along the way. Now, before we even get started, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, I have to say that. This is for entertainment and sharing what I've been doing with my money, what I'm doing for my income streams, and what I'm doing to reach that financial independence and essentially retiring early on my own time. So remember, not financial advice. So for those of you that know me or have seen this channel before, I got a really good job out of college. I jumped into a medical sales job, started making some really good money, and after I paid off my debt, I had to figure out what I was gonna do with the rest of the discretionary income. With my little knowledge, I did actually end up investing it. I started to look at places to invest the money, make the money work for me, after of course getting a nice car. Anyways, I did start putting money into my retirement accounts and for this entire time since I graduated, I have been funding my 401k and my, my IRAs. Now I've been at a couple different jobs, so what I did do was move those 401ks and roll them into the IRA. I didn't really find out and figure out or learn can't really figure out what I want to say there, learn that real estate was going to be a better income stream for me or one of the income streams that I kind of diversified until about 2015. So in the meantime, I just knew about stonks. So what I did was did a little bit of research and opened up an account with Vanguard and started putting money into some of these dividend stocks. I had a, a couple of shares of AT&T, Walmart, ConocoPhillips, all the stuff back in, I would say probably 2012. As time went on, I started to gather this dividend income stream and started to see what I could do with my money working for me in a taxable account. Remember, I had my money in my retirement accounts already, but I couldn't see any of that income. So once I saw some of that, and of course it was getting reinvested into those, those dividend stocks, I realized that I probably wanted to find other ways to create new income streams. And just like you're doing on YouTube, you know that there is a ton of research out there, so I started digging. And I found out that real estate was one of those income streams that I didn't know anything about. So with all of that research and that time, I ended up building up a, a pretty good network. I found properties, I had a realtor, a property manager. I realized I was gonna take the plunge. Only thing I needed was now capital. I was not going to find any kind of private capital or anything like that. I wasn't at that point and I had money in the stock market. So 2015, I decided that it was time to liquidate the self-managed brokerage because I already felt I had the mutual funds and ETFs in there in the retirement accounts. And so I liquidated $88,129.39 to help with the down payments on my first investment properties. Again, you're probably like, why did you get out and miss out on five years of returns, right? Especially these past five years, it's been pretty good. Well, to be very honest with you, there's, there's a couple of reasons and I think a lot of people funding their own financial freedom dream are probably gonna run into. One of which is capital. I had to make a decision and essentially it was opportunity cost, right? Leave the money in or use it to get into real estate at that point in time. Fortunately, I could have seen really good returns in the market, but at the same time, I've been able to waterfall and get into other properties because of those first purchases in 2015. I've been able to raise the rent, I see cash flow, I've been able to live essentially rent free if you really wanna call it that. The other big piece for me, which is also one of the reasons that I got back in, was that I was blindly throwing money into the market. Eh, maybe not blindly, but reading articles on Seeking Alpha instead of looking at my own metrics and really understanding what I was putting my money into and the actual company metrics. And that just didn't make sense. That wasn't a good idea. Real estate, I was able to actually run the numbers and really get a good grip on what was going on. I'm still learning every single day with the multifamily investing, but I felt I had much more of a grip on it than I did with the stock market. So now why did I actually choose to get back in and in November of 2020? As you already know, I did miss out on the big dip and the massive returns from the pandemic over to November, but I've still had some pretty solid returns and seen a little bit of dividend income getting in in November 2020. 
what's more important, and that ties to not timing the market as well, is why I actually got back in this time. The first thing is actually the diversified income, right? I've got the real estate investing, the multifamily continuing to grow, and I'll continue to do that. I've got my 401k and my IRAs, my investment accounts. The thing is, is I'm not gonna see that until 65. So another one that I was familiar with before but maybe wasn't comfortable in getting back in yet was the stock market. That's a perfect segue into the second reason, which was understanding the actual metrics that I was looking for. Real estate really helped me understand and analyze a property, understand if it was gonna cash flow with me in or out, if I needed to refinance, what the rate was gonna be, all this other stuff that I needed to pay attention to. In a way, that helped me start and understand and appreciate analyzing both the dividend stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, and creating a dividend income portfolio that is somewhat stable and safe and also grows. So this is the actual good stuff, where I'm at right now. Starting in November 2020, I decided to put in about $30,000 and wanted to split it up between ETF mutual funds and then some of the individual stocks that I was familiar with before, also testing out some of the metrics that I wanted to make sure matched for me. Now, a lot of these metrics and recommendations are already out there. Dividend Diplomats does a really good job at, at sharing some of those. I'll post their channel in the description below, but there's a couple metrics that you're looking for for your goal, right? So I knew ETFs, mutual funds, and those individual stocks meeting those specific metrics is what I was gonna initially invest in. I was planning on doing about $1,200 a month out of my own paycheck, which based on my current value of the portfolio or what I put in right now, I have been putting a little more in that, but that's draining some of my liquid cash as well as what's actually coming in from the paycheck, primarily due to some of the market dips recently. Now the portfolio is supposed to be balanced, at least in my eyes, where it's ETFs and mutual funds at about 45%, and same thing for the stocks, about 45%, and then I should have about 10% in cash in the settlement fund so I can make any kind of purchases quickly. And by quickly, I mean, I'm, I've done the research, I understand I wanna purchase a stock or buy more shares of a stock, and then I make the decision. Not impulsively buying stocks because that's actually exactly what I learned before and how you lose money. But again, not a financial advisor, just speaking from experience. The current portfolio is a little heavy on the stock side. I had about 46% in my ETFs and mutual funds, about 39%. The portfolio is made up of Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, AbV, AT&T, Apple, and then some of my crazier ones that are, I think, used for a lot of the covered calls, which I just recently got into and started to understand is Metro Mile, New Providence Acquisition, which is a SPAC for Space Mobile, Open Door, which is a real estate company, and Churchill Capital, which is the SPAC for Lucid. Also have the Vanguard S&P 500, VOO, Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, which is VYM, and then the Vanguard Utilities ETF, which is VPU. And then my only remaining Mutual fund is the Vanguard Real Estate Index Fund, which is VGSLX. Now on this stock sheet, I do have a couple of quick checks that I like to pay attention to, but a couple of things that I look at immediately, things that I can quickly look at without referencing this sheet, is the actual price to earnings ratio is under the S&P 500, right? Or the market where it's at. Right now, S&P 500 is a little high at 40.5, I believe it was. And I'm trying to find something that's about 25. Anything on the market is probably good, but again, the S&P 500 is a little bloated right now as everybody else is screaming at the top of their lungs. Now, one thing to keep in mind for the price to earnings ratio is that you do have to look at other companies in the same sector because some of those actually fluctuate and it might actually be a value play compared to other companies in say the industrial sector. I've been looking for a 10 year return that is close to the market. Right, so either a total market at 9.6% or the S&P 500 at 13.6%, so total return with that dividend over that 10 year period should be around both of those. Looking for a payout ratio of about 40 to 60%, which just means how much of their earnings they're actually paying out in dividends, right? So if it's lower, it's most likely they'll be raising their dividend. If it's too high, they might either get the dividend cut or the dividend's not gonna be paying it anymore. And then also overall company fundamentals, which is where a lot of these quick checks come into play and you go in and take a look at the company. The other bonus pieces that I look for if I meet the other metrics is a three to 5% yield, as well as the company being a dividend aristocrat, which means that they are part of the S&P 500 and have paid and increased their dividend over the last consecutive 25 years. The other piece of the portfolio is the actual income, the cash flow. So the dividends I've seen so far, Johnson & Johnson, $15.15, .15, Procter & Gamble, $11.86, 
AbV $19.50, AT&T is $104, and then Apple at $2.26. The other revenue I've seen is options revenue and not the traditional calls or puts, but something a little different that my friend showed me, a little lower risk in my opinion, which is a covered call. You own shares in a company and sell a contract or an option where you're obligated to sell if it is exercised. And so far I've seen about $9 on the SPAC for Space Mobile, New Providence Acquisition Company, Open Door about $88, and Churchill Capital $55, which is the SPAC for Lucid. Current value of the portfolio is about $45,000 right now, and the plan is to continually add in about $1,200 a month until the end of the year. Now that could change as the job changes or I start seeing certain additional income that I will probably be adding to certain stakes in companies that I already own. What I've actually learned the second time around in the stock market. The very first thing is that knowledge really is power, right? And I know you probably wanna drive heat at that, but that's really true in this case and for any of your investing. The understanding of what you're actually looking for, the metrics to look at and what you're doing in the market really eases a lot of the anxiety and the the need or the want, you know, the, the battle there, the human emotion to make an impulsive decision. Like pull out when the market is down, that kind of stuff, and making bad decisions like I did the first time around. It helps out a little bit if you're understanding what you're looking for and what you have a longer term goal. Again, that really helped with the real estate investing because I had to create essentially a business plan around that and what I was trying to get done there. And it's the same thing in this case. I am an emotional being and I have made mistakes as most human beings have. And so again, the knowledge really makes a big difference when you're buying into the market and you're trying to make these buys on individual stocks. Bonus piece to that is the really easy way of making any of this dividend income is finding a couple of really solid ETFs and mutual funds and just putting a good amount of money in there. There's plenty of people that actually do that. Uh, Our Rich Journey, which I'll post their description in the uh, comment section below is another great one. I think they've put a whole bunch of money into like BTSAX, which is a total stock market mutual fund. Yields are a little lower, but it tracks the entire market and it's just a little safer in terms of being exposed to multiple companies instead of just one single stock. And that leads to the very second thing and that is literally anybody can do this. Like I just said, there's a simple way of doing it through the ETFs, mutual funds. You don't necessarily need a financial advisor. That's not financial advice. I'm just speaking from experience here that you can put it in an ETF or a mutual fund that tracks a couple of indexes and still receive a dividend and still see massive growth over the long term and actually utilize that instead of just having your retirement accounts. There's also the ability of getting more into some of these individual stocks, understanding the company fundamentals and buying into the individual stocks as well but that requires more time. So it kind of lines up with what you want to spend the time on, how much time you have on, in terms of research and everything, and how comfortable you feel with diving into that. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and press like. If you want to come back for any of the other financial journey videos that I'll be doing and some of the adventures, go ahead and press subscribe. If you got any questions, comments, go ahead and leave one in the comment section below. Hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll see you later.